Today, we're going to visit a few places to collect some protection money. Two restaurants and a motel outside of town. Bill at the motel was late last time because he had a few problems. So today, he'll pay a little more. You may have heard about how criminals can prey on businesses using various threats. That certainly isn't the case with us. People who pay us receive services, which the police certainly can't provide them with. Last month, for example, Sam and Paulie here solved a serious problem with violence in a delightful restaurant. The owner is now satisfied that nothing of that sort will happen there again. You'll do the driving. Paulie and Sam will do the collecting. It'll be routine. Tell Ralph to give you a car, and you can go. Okay, boss. Well, you and I'll have a drink. What do you say, Frank? <laughs> Hey, Ralphie. Me and the boys have got a job to do, and I need some wheels. And, hey, Tommy, I got this here, baby. It has about 40 horsepower and goes almost 60 miles an hour. Ain't nothing swanky, but it's it's a good enough drive. You get into it easy. You just take, take, take this little baby and stick it in here. Try it a little, and when it clicks, you got it. It's a piece of cake. Thanks, Ralphie. Hey, Vincenzo. I need some kind of gun. Hey, Tom. I think this'll do the trick. It should work. I wasn't planning on using it anyway. Thanks. I said it would be better by car than on foot.
Wait for us here, Tom. We'll be back in a bit. Okay. Let's go. Polly! Tell Salieri from here on out this place is ours. Capiche? Don't come back here, you'll end up in worse shape than your friends. Get Sam! They wanna beat some information out of him. Get him out of there! But I gotta get you to a doctor. That'll wait. First, get Sam. Screw regular routine.
Doctor, help me. Where is this bastard? I'm gonna kill you, you son of a bitch. Get up, Sam. Oh. It's over. He really went to work on you, buddy. Let's go. Oh. Christ. Oh. It's nothing. Mm. You'll be all right. The doctor will put you back together again. Oh. You're tough as nails. Oh, oh shit. Mm. That's it. I'll get you back in the car. <sighs> Everything will be okay. Don't move, scumbag, or I'll fill you with holes. Come on. Just try it. You won't get past me. Sure thing, buddy. Uh, just stay cool. Everything's okay. Just go. No problem. Just try it. No. God. Uh, go. Get him. That's how I got into it. One minute a regular cabbie, the next a respected mafioso. You were all right with killing people? Usually people have a problem with that. You know, I ain't one of those people with a thirst for blood. I don't need violence in my life, and I don't look for trouble, but I also don't have any remorse. They wanted to outsmart us, so we had to outsmart them. No excuses. It was all the same to me. I wasn't interested in the fates of other people. Everybody said it was just business, and that the family sticks together. It was different from living alone and nobody giving a damn about you. Suddenly you're respected by all the people you meet. Everybody knows you can help them, but you can also destroy their lives. And everybody tries to ingratiate themselves to you. And what about the police? You just walked away, just like that, from a massacre. Didn't you have any problem with this? You work for the police. You ought to know. You know the Mafia runs the whole city. The Salieri family makes over 25 million bucks every year. The papers were full of it. But nobody saw nothing. If they wanted to stay alive. We paid off the bureaucrats six grand a month. Your bosses had liquor at trade price and got payouts for special jobs from both Salieri and Morello. 
Case closed. Lack of evidence. Cops would even move shipments of drink for us. I guess you'd have heard something about that. So what about your two friends? Well, they were better off than you'd think. Salieri had a good doc for his boys, and it's not like he ever asked any questions. In a few weeks, they'd be healthy and back on the streets again. The only one who worried us was Morello. He wanted to be the big cheese, which Salieri couldn't let him do. Salieri had no intention of being in second place. You know, a person becomes a Don because of his thirst for power. And he doesn't care about any other rules than his own. That's how it is, Detective. So he'd be his own boss, independent of the police, of the state, of anyone. That's why a person becomes a Don. Salieri and Morello both wanted it all. They kept sparring with each other, but they both knew that if it all blew up, it would be hell. The big difference between them was in their methods. I heard a little story about Morello. I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Um... You I idiot! Mean it. Do you know what you've done? Do you know how much that car cost? I, uh, I was driving slowly, Mr. Morello. Uh, I don't know how, uh... Do you mean to say that I... I crashed into your car? Uh, uh, no. Sir, I, uh, I only... I wanted... Uh, no, sir, I... No! Faster gets in my way! Salieri built his respect as a businessman. Everybody knew that they didn't need to fear him if they did what they should. They knew that if they needed something, they could come to Mr. Salieri. So Salieri made friends, often helped people with various problems, and expected the same in return. When somebody crossed him, they broke a cardinal rule, and everybody knew what would happen. Morello was just a mean bastard. He built his power through violence. Even his friends feared him. Most people just tried to avoid him. <laughs> 